So it's kind of odd to read headlines that Hasbro, the toy company, bought Death Row Records. You're like, why would they even buy this company? Why would they buy a record company? <sighs> Oof, what a weekend. The Mandalorian trailer drops. Obi-Wan Kenobi television show gets confirmed. Ray may be turning dark. And on top of all that, Hasbro buys Death Row Records. Let's talk about it all and more. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with a whole new video. Now, I know I did a video earlier today, the not necessarily Star Wars news, where we talked about news from D23 and movie news for the week, and toy news and all that. But that was more just giving you the headlines and kind of making a little joke about it. So I thought I'd do this video here to kind of break down what all went down and just kind of give my thoughts on it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and give you some news that you probably already know. This is more my reaction to the news, but hopefully, maybe if you hadn't been following it in detail, you'll learn some stuff here, too. So, uh, i got a lot to cover, right? I mean, we've got the Mandalorian, we got Obi-Wan Kenobi, we got the Rise of Skywalker, and then all that's just from D23. And I figure we'd talk about this crazy news that broke yesterday that Hasbro, the toy company Hasbro, bought. Death Row Records. Now, if you grew up in the 90s, if you were a teen in the 90s or in the 20s like me in your 90s, you knew Death Row Records. I mean, they were the artists behind rappers like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Suge Knight, um, Tupac, I believe he was on Death Row Records. I mean, it was a huge record company back in the early 90s. And now, it's owned by Hasbro. Hasbro bought it. But we'll get to that. Let's start. Uh, let's see. I got some notes over here where we're going to start at. Let's talk, let's talk about what everybody wants to talk about probably the most that came out of D through 23, and that's the Mandalorian. That's right, the Mandalorian trailer. But um, I'm losing my thought. Let me, let me get this out. This is Sunday night. Let me get this out first real quick because I want to make sure you know about it. There was not a behind-the-scenes reel released uh, shown at D23 for Rise of the Skywalker. However... Monday, tomorrow, on Good Morning America and online, they will release a behind-the-scenes reel. This wasn't shown at D23. D23 did get some exclusive footage that will not be released to the public. What's in the behind-the-scenes reel Monday? We don't know yet. So remember, check online Monday morning between, I would say, between 8 and 10 o'clock during GTMA, GTMA, Good Morning America, GMA, that's where the behind-the-scenes reel will drop again. It wasn't even shown at D23. I think they want us all to mostly focus on the Mandalorian trailer and not overwhelm us too much. But let's get back to them. I just wanted to really put that out there, really, just so you guys would know to be looking out for it. Uh, now that I'm working more and I don't have time to do videos every time news hits, uh, you just got to follow me on Twitter. Twitter. Hopefully, I'll let you know then when it's out. If not, I'll do a video on it. Maybe later in the day, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how the uh, reel comes out. Now, what do I have on the the Mandalorian trailer? Whew. First, they showed this on D, at D23, and I was getting kind of worried because a lot of times, like during Celebration, they stream it live, and if D23 gets it, then they get the trailer. We get the trailer at the same time online, but it took a few hours later, and I was starting to think, oh, man, they're going to hold this in exclusive again like they did for Celebration. Uh, so I was worried, and then how it always goes, I took some time away from the internet. It was Friday night, came back about three hours later, and everyone was talking about the Mandalorian trailer, so I just missed the whole hype on it. So, uh, and I was going to do a trailer reaction, a thoughts then, but I knew so much news was coming out during D23, so I just waited all out and do one video at a time. So let's uh, pull the trailer up now. I don't really like doing reaction videos, but let's just, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but let's just look at how it starts. It starts, uh, I never noticed that. It starts with Stormtrooper heads in the desert. Uh, I guess just the helmets. So hopefully, hopefully there's no heads in them, but I'm looking at this first one you see on the far right here, and it looks like it has blood on the helmet. That's interesting. So let's play the trailer here. Let me turn the sound down. And if I see anything that jumps out at me, I've only seen the trailer like twice, so... Um, there you got them on the sticks. Look at that. That's pretty cool. You got them on the sticks right there. 
Maybe they do get a heads in on. <laughs> get the Lucasfilm logo. Got some kind of shit flying. Uh, across the desert. Look, it just looks beautiful. It looks like a movie. It doesn't look like, you know, they look like they really didn't hold back on the budget of this. Um, Carl Weathers. It's good to see Carl Weathers again. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Looks like some kind of dried up desert there, I guess. And there's the Mandalorian putting on all his uh, armor. It's a crazy looking thing. There's one of those, uh, let's see what they're called. See, I'm not good enough to remember the alien's name sometimes. They didn't make an action figure of it. Guy from Breaking Bad, love seeing him in it. Mandalorian with his rifle that's kind of like Boba Fett had in the holiday special. Oh, look at that, like a swoop bike or a speeder bike. And there's the IG. I'm going to call him IGD8, sorry. There he is. Look at that spinning around shooting. That's awesome. Hmm. God, it looks, I cannot wait for this. Man, it looks awesome. Ooh, that's somebody frozen in carbonite. Who was that? Is that, that old man frozen or somebody else? The Mandalorian. I didn't even notice he was moving in the A, the original. <sighs> I'm sure you all seen the trailer now. Whew, the Mandalorian. I cannot wait for this. Now, I do wish it was a Boba Fett show. I don't know why they bring back Boba Fett and IG-88 to change them and make IG-88 now ig 11, I think he's called. Boba Fett's now the uh, well, the Mandalorian was outfit, but I heard he's got a name that just hadn't really his real name yet. Why don't they just make this Boba Fett and IG-88? Wouldn't that be awesome? I only can say is maybe John Favreau, those making the film, didn't want to be, they wanted to do like a Boba Fett show, but they didn't want to be tied into the history of Boba Fett or IG-88. You know, there's a lot of baggage that comes really with Boba Fett that you really have to stay in canon with or just what the fans in their head want so doing something that's boba fett like like boba fett with which is different than boba fett you can play with the character more and change things more while having to say okay this is the boba fett we know let's stick to it so that's my only uh reason i guess they didn't go ahead and just make it boba fett it would have been it would have been great now entertainment weekly reported today that um Episodes will be weekly, uh, not all at once, so you can't binge it. For I remember a while back, they said they're going to release two on the uh, on the uh, first day it premieres. Now, I didn't see anything on the in the new uh, Entertainment Weekly column about that, but that's what I heard anyway. But from going on from there, they're going to be weekly. So if you're just the type that wants to binge something on day day one, sorry, but I really like this. Now. Um, I'm not a binge guy because I like to watch something, absorb it, leave me hanging, get me excited, waiting till the next episode. And it's like Stranger Things. Yes, I watch them. I'm watching them as fast as I can, but it's not that fun because I'll watch one or two episodes and people online hasn't haven't watched it or they've already binged it. So I just you can't really sit there and debate. Hey, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is coming at? Getting excited for that next episode. And I'm really good to see that. I think they're doing this with all the Disney Plus stuff, not just The Mandalorian. But I, I kind of like that, that they're kind of going to do it week to week, you know. Um, like, I think Hulu does a lot of their shows week to uh, week. to week. Can't talk. It's hard to say week to week. Week to leak. Oh, you are the leakest week. Um, anyway, what was I saying? I, I'm glad they're doing this every week because, like I said, I didn't get excited. Um... I don't know if they're going to drop it like at midnight that day it premieres or the day it comes out for that week or not. That'd be interesting. So you might have some time that we have to wait and talk about it. Uh, but you don't have to worry about them putting them all up. And if you don't have the time to sit there and watch, you know, nine, ten episodes, you can, um, you know, you don't have to worry about spoilers and everything except for that one episode that's already out. So that's good. Um, now, who was that frozen in carbonite? Did you see that? I didn't notice that even when I watched the first trailer. I don't know how, the first time I watched it. Don't know how I didn't notice that. So, who was that? Was it the old guy they showed after? It looks kind of like him, but it looks kind of like an alien too, so I'm not really sure. It's probably nobody special. I mean, it's probably maybe special to the show, but I don't think it's like Darth Maul or anything like that, but that's pretty cool. Um, now, IG-11 is in this. It's not IG-88, but I'm going to call him IG-88, I'm sure. And everybody online, especially before the trailer or when they first found out this droid was in the show, called him IG-11. I mean, just kind of mixed them up. Called him IG-88, because to us, he's IG-88. And I was reading the Entertainment Weekly uh, 
article they did on this show, and it seems that characters within the Mandalorian get this guy, IG-11, mixed up with IG-88. So I think that's kind of fun. They're kind of poking fun at it. That it's not just us fans that's going to get them mixed up. The characters on the show are going to get them mixed up with the famous IG-88. I guess everybody knows IG-88, and they're like, looks like IG-88. Call him IG-88. And he's going to be like, no, I'm not IG-88. But it looks cool. I mean, dream to always seeing IG-88 in action. This is close to what we're going to get with IG-11. But you see spinning around, got guns behind him and everything. You didn't even really get to see him move in Empire Strikes Back. So this is the first time we get to see IG-88, I know, IG-11, in action, moving around, instead of just standing there. It's great. And I hope we get to see some other bounty hunters that we saw in Empire. I, I want to see, I mean, just bring back a couple, I mean, Bosk. Give me Bosk. Don't rename him. Don't say he's another alien like Bosk. Give me Bosk. Give me Dengar. Give me Zuckus. Give me somebody. Bosk would be very cool, I think. Hopefully, uh, John Favreau did an interview with a lot of Easter eggs, too, for fans that grew up on the old stuff. And there's a lot of stuff hidden in there. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff to look for in this in this show. I mean, just, just along the Boa Fett, oh, gone Boa Fett, the Mandalorian has that, uh, Gun that has um, the handle of that gun, you can tell, is based on the holiday special gun. I'll put a picture up, I guess, over here, over here, somewhere like that. Uh, God, I cannot wait for this. The Mandalorian. Tell me what you think. Are you excited about this? I feel so sorry for all those people out there that say they're going to boycott boycott Star Wars. Star Wars is dead. I don't care about boycott. I don't care about Star Wars anymore. I'm not going to watch Star Wars. <laughs> sorry. We're going to watch it because this, this looks awesome. I mean, I, I don't know what more you could want for when we're talking about a Star Wars television show. Uh, I guess the only other television show we would want that we were probably asking for or getting close to asking for or a movie was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, it's been rumored for years that they were working together and it came out last week or two that, yeah, there's going to be an Obi-Wan television show on Disney+. Plus. But it wasn't confirmed until D23 when Kathleen Kennedy came out. She called Ewan McGregor out and asked him, but he told her to ask him, hey, are you going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? He said yes, and the crowd went crazy. Now, they hadn't started filming on this yet, so there was no photos to show us, really no information about the show, other than they just confirmed that, hey, Obi-Wan Kenobi is coming to Disney Plus in his own television show. And, you know, when I first heard about, you know, when we first started talking about Obi-Wan doing a, it was first Obi-Wan a movie, and then they said, well, let's do it, you know, there was rumors of a TV show, and I thought, Oh, come on, just give me three Obi-Wan movies. We don't need a TV show. But TV is at its golden age now where you can really work on the character, show a lot of depth to the characters, the new characters, really spend time with Obi-Wan. I mean, if we did a movie, we would get, what, a two-hour Obi-Wan movie, two to three years later, maybe another two-hour movie, and then maybe a third movie, and that's it. Maybe, if that, maybe just one movie, if it didn't do so well. Who knows? But... Well, a television show, I mean, I think they're saying it's going to be nine or ten episodes uh, for season one, if they do more than that. And you got nine episodes, probably going to be about an hour long each. So we're looking at, what, nine, nine hours to really develop Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, Obi-Wan's already developed. I mean, what else could they do? But we can really dig in more, have more breathing room of Obi-Wan maybe dealing with life on tattoo. I mean, think about it. Obi-Wan... Lost his best friend. Lost everyone he knows. Lost the Jedi Order. Lost his religion. Lost the galaxy. He has to deal with all this. Now, I'm sure it's going to take place just a few years after uh, Episode 3. They haven't really given us a timeline yet. But that's a lot. That's something you can really dig into. Make it a really heavy show. Especially at 9 hours. Season 1 of him dealing with losing all that. And. Not only that, the mistakes he made with Anakin, the mistakes he made. Does Obi-Wan even know Darth Vader is Anakin at the end of Episode 3? Or will he find it out during this film here, this television show here? I'm not sure what the canon says, but it'd be very interesting if maybe he does find out that he doesn't know Darth Vader is Anakin, and he does find out during this show. Uh, I hope Darth Vader doesn't come on. I hope they don't do an Obi-Wan Darth Vader fight and all that, because I like that the last time they saw each other was this showdown in episode three please i hope they don't do this again i got a feeling we'll see luke skywalker i'm not sure if we'll see him up close and he'll have a he'll be a character on it but i think we'll get some shots of maybe obi-wan 
looking off into the desert while Obi Wan, while uh, Luke and uh, Biggs and Tank and all them's you know flying their T sixteen Skyhopper and stuff, and kind of got you know Obi Wan keeping an eye on them, and then goes on about his own adventure. I kind of like to see it maybe like an A team. You know, the A team always had to deal with some local troubles. Somebody came and helped them. That uh, somebody needed their help with some local troubles or. Uh, it was another show like, oh, the Hulk. Remember the Hulk? He would, he would go town to town helping people with their local troubles. Obi-Wan might be kind of good like that. I don't really know if I want it to be a, something grand, you know, something where Obi-Wan has to save the galaxy or Obi-Wan's called by the Republic to go rescue this person or do this mission for the, Re or do this mission for the rebels. You know, I, I would rather see him just kind of dealing with being isolated, losing Anakin, losing the Jedi Order. Losing the galaxy, losing all his friends, the failures that he believes he did, maybe he did do or didn't do, of training Anakin Skywalker. I want to see him dealing with that at the same time, maybe dealing with some kind of local trouble that's uh, maybe it's high stakes, but it's not as high stakes as the galaxy needs you, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't like that as much, but whatever they do, I'm interested to see what they're going to do about it. Okay, now we talked about Obi-Wan. Let's go on to the footage so shown at D23 of Rise of Skywalker. Now, this footage was only shown at D23, wasn't released online. Uh, a lot of people are calling it a trailer, but it's not really a trailer. It's, well, I understand it's more of a montage of all the films leading up to the Rise of uh, reading up leading up to the Rise of Skywalker, and it ends. You know, it shows episode one and two and goes on up and then at the end shows some scenes from the new movie and one of those scenes that got everybody talking and buzzing was apparently Ray in a black cloak uh, with a red lightsaber. Uh, they said her eyes are dark where she looks mean or she looks like a Sith or she looks like she's on the dark side. Now I've seen a lot of people talking that this is a double lightsaber but uh, from a guy I know that went there this is more it is a double bladed lightsaber red but it's more of a U-shaped handle or kind of bends and folds. Because um, I got one report, some guy said it's kind of like a nunchuck that turns into a lightsaber. So when you think double-bladed lightsaber, you think something like Darth Maul. So I don't think it's really like that, at least from what this guy told me, that it's kind of, the handle's kind of U-shaped. How you'd use it, I'm not sure. Now, don't jump to conclusion. Everybody's like, oh my God, Ray turned dark. Ray's going to turn dark. This is the last movie, so it's not like they're going to turn her dark and turn her good by the end. And I can't imagine them ending that movie with Rey being a Sith Lord or a Dark Jedi and killing her or something like that. But So we could be looking at a little scene here that's just a vision. Maybe Kylo seeing what... Maybe Kylo's having a vision of what the future could be if Rey takes over. It could be Rey, maybe a vision of her or some kind of dream where she's worried uh about what if she gives in to her to the dark side and what can she become or you know the emperor loves cloning he could have a clone ray that's been trained in the dark jedi arts so who knows what this could be it's just one little clip you gotta remember we saw a clip in the last jedi trailer of ray holding that kylo lightsaber and people was like oh my god look she's got a red lightsaber she's gonna turn bad she's got kylo's lightsaber oh my god she's turning bad so you never know. So don't read too much in this little clip. I think it's more just to get everybody excited and hyped. Uh, I heard there was even a scene or something where you hear the Emperor talking to Ray, But again, this footage hasn't been released. From what I understand, it's not going to be released. I know the uh, official Star Wars site said it was an exclusive footage at D23. But that brings me back to something I talked about earlier. Monday, tomorrow, August 26th. The behind the scenes reel. So there we'll get some clips of the show and some of them goofing off around the scene and stuff. I'm not really a big fan of these behind the scene reels, but they do kind of get you kind of hyped. And right now, anything I can get at all would be exciting. So maybe we'll get a glimpse of that dark ray in that trailer there. Who knows? Um, the trailer itself, the next trailer is probably not going to hit until April. It looks like when they do these movies with The Force Awakens, Rogue One, and The Last Jedi Solo is a little different because of the release date. You had Celebration for the trailer, you had D23 with Behind the Scene Reel, which is kind of, but seems the real, it's close enough to say it's right in that same time period. Then around October, I think it's usually during the Monday Night Football game, you have a trailer for the new movie. So, so look for the next trailer to be in October. Woo! Man, then the poster hit. They released a poster, I guess they call this the teaser poster. 
Uh, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just uh, just a poster. Uh, something in the last 10, 20 years maybe. Just posters don't really do anything for me anymore. Uh, I mean, sure, there is an exception to every rule. Every once in a while there's one poster. But for the most part, a poster nowadays looks just like somebody cut some stuff out on Photoshop and threw it up on a poster. The Last Jedi one looked like that. The Force Awaken ones I liked a little better. Um, but again... Didn't really see anything special. Didn't hate it. It's got Obi Wan. It's got uh, Kylo Ren and Rey fighting on what looks like part of the Death Star. And in the background, you see lightly see kind of mixed into the dark, kind of like Vader did in the Empire poster. Is the Emperor, which is kind of an odd looking Emperor. It doesn't really look like him when you first look at it. it Take him and say, "Is that the Emperor?" So it doesn't like uh, Ian McDermott. It just looks kind of odd, and it's kind of come out now that that picture of Palpatine on the poster look like it's based on a Hot Toys and not the actor. Well, the toy's based on the actor, so I don't know. It's kind of weird to me, that whole thing. But, the poster looks cool, but like I said, I, I, I've heard people talking bad about it online, but people overpraising it. It just looks like a poster. Haven't seen a poster in a couple years that I really, really got excited about. Uh, let me check my notes just to make sure I didn't forget anything. I, there is Toys Us in Canada. Some guy did find new, uh, Rise of Skywalker figures. He found a Kylo and one of the troopers. Nothing really special. I mean, we know what Kylo looks like. Kylo Ren, that is, in case you're thinking of some Kylo Johnson or something. And one of the troopers. Um, these aren't the regular 3.75 figures or the Black Series. These are the figures based, uh, they, from the, it looks like they're from that cartoon line. Not Resistance, I guess, but remember the online cartoon they did? It looks like it's something like that. I'm not really sure. But that's the line it looks like it's from. Um, so it's really nothing great to talk about when it comes to those figures. Um, hopefully we'll get, uh, you know, we got Force Friday coming up, uh, October, November. So I thought maybe D23, they might showcase some stuff, but they, apparently they didn't. So I'm sure we got something coming. I hope they don't do that god awful. Remember, remember before the Force Awakens, they did that unboxing online 24 hour stream or something. It was horrible and dumb. Hmm, I don't know who thought that. Um, what else have we got here? We got the Galaxy Edge. We got a Star Wars theme hotel spaceship, space cruiser you can stay in. Now, here's the catch. Most of us probably not going to be able to stay there. Because for a family of five, it's going to cost you a little over $3,000 to stay on the ship, uh, the ship hotel. And they're saying that price is the lowest price. So that means for the $3,300, they're probably going to put you in a broom closet down the hall at the very edge of the ship. So you're not going to get the nice room. I don't know. I know all this stuff is expensive to make, but they're really pricing out the average middle class family. I mean, if a family's going to pay, if a family's got to pay over $3,000 just for the hotel, and I'm guessing that hopefully gets you into the park also, but that doesn't include food and merchandise you're going to buy and all these other things. $3,000, I mean, most fun movies are going to say, hey, let's take that movie and go on a big trip to like Europe or leave the country or something. I can't see playing $3,000 a night to stay at this plane. I would love it, but they see they're really just pricing out the the small guys or the middle class and lower. I mean, there's no way that people's going to be able to spend that kind of money. And I, it didn't say in the report I read that $3,000 were per night, but come on, I'm pretty sure it is per night. Now, let's go uh, talk Hasbro news here just because it's kind of was all over Twitter and kind of people making fun of it. The Hasbro bought Death Row Records. Yep. We talked about it earlier, uh, the home of, the home in the 90s, at least, to Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre. Uh, I don't think Ice Cube. No, Ice Cube wasn't on that, was he? Um, Shook Knight, I think, was one of the big ones that owned it. Snoop Dogg. Warren G. There's a lot of people in the 90s that were part of Death Row Records, big gangster rap uh, record label. So it's kind of odd to read headlines that Hasbro, the toy company, bought Death Row Records. You're like, why would they even buy this company? Why would they buy a record company? Uh, they're going to make, you know, uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg action figures. What's going on here? Well, if you read more than just a headline, you see that actually Death Row Records went into bankruptcy a few years ago and got bought out by this company that goes around and buys companies that are in bankruptcy. And that's the company Hasbro bought. So actually Hasbro bought this other company, which that company does own Death Row Records, but they own dozens of other things. One of the things they do own is something called 
Pega Pig, Pika Pig. I, I, I honestly, I should have looked up the name. Pega Pig or something like that. Some kind of little kid cartoon thing. I'll try to find a picture and stick it up. I don't know what Pega Pig is, but apparently they own that too. So you can see why Hasbro would want something like Pega Pig or something. So that way they can do toy lines based on it. So they didn't really set out, hey, we're going to buy Death Row Records. We're going to buy, you know, Shoot Nice record label and make figures and toys based on that. They just bought the company that owns Death Row Records and owns a bunch of other stuff. So, But it's kind of funny seeing the headline, Hasbro buys Death Row Records and people making memes and stuff of like Dr. Dre as a potato head and stuff like that. It was kind of funny. Now, I guess that's about all I got to talk about when it comes to D23. Uh, some other news broke this week. That Kevin Smith's coming back. I'm oh, not coming back. Kevin Smith's going to produce a new He-Man Masters of the Universe cartoon. He says it's going to pick up where the old one left off, which I'm not, I mean, it's not like that one left you hanging or anything. Just kind of ended. Uh, and I can't see this one being as cheesy and 80s feeling as that one. So I don't really sure what he means by that. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to write it. Just I think he's just going to produce it. But I'm sure with the, you know this writing background, he'll write it. He'll be doing some of the writing, too, maybe directing. But I'm curious. It's going to be on Netflix. It's a He-Man animation show. I would like it to see it more like the 80s stuff. A family-friendly, maybe poking fun of itself, maybe a little bit also. Um, you know, if you watch Cartoon Network, there's a lot of cartoons out there that are smart, that's aimed for kids, but they kind of hit you with a lot of uh, adult stuff, too, that's not too in-your-face, but it makes it fun for the adults to watch it with their kids. And I would love to see maybe Netflix go that angle here. Make it where on the surface it looks like a He-Man kid cartoon. But then when you watch it, you're like, hey, this is some little heavy issues. And I thought that maybe the kids don't really get. But there's some in there for the adult fans also. I think that would be really neat. Um, you know, they've been talking for a long time about a He-Man movie. I just, I want to see a He-Man movie. It just seems like it's so hard to do right. And how do you do it? Do you take it real serious and change it from what, a lot of fans know is He-Man, or do you kind of poke fun at it and make it kind of like making fun of the 80s cartoon? I mean, there's some people that think of He-Man, they think of the comics, some think of the toy line, some think of the cartoon. To me, when I think He-Man and the Master of the Universe, my mind goes to the cartoon and to the figures that kind of link together. I know the figures came first, but to me, it's always been the cartoon. The figures are based on the cartoon. That's how I always looked at it as a kid because I loved the cartoon so much. So I wanted the action figures. If it was an action figure and I didn't see him in the cartoon, I really didn't care nothing about having him. That later line, I think they did a lot of stuff that wasn't in the cartoon. And by then I was totally toned out. So it would be very hard to do a movie. I mean, you're talking about a guy with muscles running around in his fuzzy underwear fighting a guy with a skull face. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard to take serious, but you don't want them to go too campy with it or too feel like they're making fun of it. So... Who's ever in charge of doing a Masters of the Universe movie? You got your work cut out for you because if you get too far from the source material, the fans aren't going to like it. So it, that's that's going to be a hard one to do. But anyway, that's a look at D23 and a couple of stuff. Like I said, I did the news video earlier, but uh, there I kind of just did the headlines and made a goof on it. And I kind of just want to talk about this stuff. In a full video, so I want to appreciate you watching. Again, comment below. Let me know what you think about all this, the, about the trailer for Mandalorian, Obi-Wan Kenobi spinoff, The Rise of Skywalker, and all that. Let me know in the comments below, and always thumb up this video so I know you like my content, and mostly so YouTube knows you like my content, and we'll shoot it out there for more people. And if you get a chance, share this video or share some of my videos on social media. That way, you can help me grow. And if you want to support the channel, head over to Patreon.com. Uh, support the channel that way or head over to thatjunkman.com buy some cool t-shirts and I think that is all we have yes it is Fred take us out of here thank you sir for that unsolicited testimony <laughs> <laughs>